So, is uh, Justin, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, thanks for calling in. Uh, I can give you a f- uh, few minutes just to, you know, introduce yourself. And I wanna, just want to talk about uh, some of the, the issues that have been happening, uh, I know, up in your neck of the woods with uh, the treaty, the, that a conference, especially a conference that you attended, uh, that you were protesting, and anything else that you would like to share with us. Uh, I know that uh, the Lummi also... Um, uh, Jewel, I guess he signed a, a document to join forces with all their uh, relatives on the uh, Canadian side of uh, Turtle Island, and want to talk a little bit about that too. Just fill okay. folks in. So, thanks for calling. Thank you. So, you can introduce yourself, and then we'll get talking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my Indian name is Shumit. I'm a Lummi tribal member. My English name is Justin Finkbonner. Um, currently a senior policy analyst for Treasury Treasurer's Office of the Lummi Indian Business Council. Um, also a canoe skipper on the intertribal canoe journey for some of our Lummi youth canoes. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm a father of a 10-year-old son who's also uh, an activist himself. Got into it pretty well this year. He's part of the his stepfather runs the Sacred Water Canoe Family down in Suquamish. And, uh, he's been doing helping out with a lot of work this year, so really proud of him. Just like to thank you for this opportunity to, to be on the radio today to share my thoughts on some of the issues that are going on up, up in Lummi, uh, Northwest area. Uh, we appreciate it. I, I um I've been talking a little bit about the the coal trains that want to go through there and um, unearth a, a burial ground. It just irks me when I hear these things. But uh, I just wanted our relatives to understand that well, there's things going on in our backyard that we need to really look at. Yeah, the Pacific Gateway Terminals has been proposing to build uh, just that terminals on our at Cherry Point, which is one of the largest and last deep water bays in the northwest area along the west coast, which makes it susceptible for Panama-sized vessels, which means they call them, um, you know, the, the um, canal-sized vessels, cape-sized vessels that are too large and too deep to pass through the uh, Panama Canal required to go around Cape Horn is South uh, South America, and and um, so they're trying to push coal exports off of the Northwest now, since European markets are cooling down, and U.S. coal burning fire plants are starting to be decommissioned, and there's a huge increase of coal burning plants over in China to to um, provide low cost energy to manufacture goods that end up coming over here and worldwide. So Cherry Point is ground zero. Um, if, they, if they can host the largest, you know, terminals to maximize shipping for this still over 54 million metric tons of coal um, outside of that area, um, you know, it's a benefit to them and the sales you know, to China. But unfortunately, um, you know, back in the early 80s, Western Washington University's archaeology department conducted an archaeological dig, found one of the largest native villages and grave sites in the Salish Sea area um, at that place, at Cherry Point. The weeks in this traditional name I means the village of the old ones. And... Um, it's a sacred place for us. It's part of our creation stories belong there. And it was where the first salmon first salmon ceremony was held at. And um, two miles located located two miles north of our the border of our reservation and um, an important place to us. Uh, back in the eighties and nineties and early two thousands our people, our tribal fishermen, you know, we'd we would um, do uh, herring row up there. We catch it was 
one of the largest herring spawning areas in the northwest and uh, on the west coast of the Pacific. And and um, we used to be able to um, create job and economic opportunities and, and resources and food, um, you know, for our people out of there. You know, my 85-year-old grandfather still takes his 15-foot skiff up there and fishes sockeye. And um, when it, when he's eligible, el- available to do that, my, my father still fishes up there. I still fish up there. My son now fishes up there. We have four generations fishing off that beach. And um, with the new piers that have been, you know, installed there in the last 10 years, the expansions, you got ARCO, BP, and Tanafka. And then they've all made it very, very hard to crab and fish out of that area. So it's a really good place for our fishing. Uh, we can't collect the no more crab, clams, or oysters out of there because it, the water's so polluted. <laughs> vessels that are in there now, and they, they you know, they, they come, they, when they're those types of vessels, they're looking, you know, they come out of China, they have to, they have to fill their tankers up and they, with the foreign water from over there, and then they come across the sea, and then they empty it out in our waters, and it's, you know, putting invasive species into our into our waters, and it's killing off, you know, a lot of our natural habitat. And, um, yeah, it's just not a good situation up there as it is right now. So they want to, you know, throw the coal into the mix with arsenic and mercury. At you know, like at a microscopic size, you know the dust that gets put off into that water. You know, oh, the tide that drains flows to that area in the Cherry Point goes directly right to our aquaculture, where we have you know our, we have fourteen hundred acres of you know water that's an aquaculture there that grows clam for people and oysters and. And we have a fish hatchery there that that's silver salmon running through there that our people still fish and eat them. So, um, you know, like when I was when I was reading about it, and uh, the what people don't understand, the, the coal makes three, four trips through there, um, anywhere in the water. All that uh, the coal dust goes into the water and. And it kills the salmon and kills all the other things but but to wanna to wanna dig up a burial ground i just it makes me feel both angry and sad that they would even propose something like that you know this is a this is a sacred site and um for people to wanna the government especially wanted to dig that up that just um Make, it just makes me upset. Yeah, they've illegally dug up to 70 different um, core samples to measure the geology, you know, the water table in that in that area. And they uh, bulldozed a mile and a half road through the woods to help drain the, the wetlands out of there illegally. Uh, you know, this size and magnitude of a project with the kind of investors such as Sack and Fox, I mean, Golden, Golden Sack and, and uh, you know, Warren Buffett behind it, um, you know, they've got the money to be able to pay the kind of fines so they don't have to worry about, you know, any of the water issues. And so we're hoping that we'll be able to file a lawsuit against Pacific Gateway Terminals and SSA Marine, which could become a sizable, you know, um, lawsuit because every tribal member that's impacted by the disturbance to our, our to that site is um, could receive compensation. And I don't know, you know, if they dug over seventy. 70 core samples, I don't know if, you know, it bunched that into one or if that's 70 individual, you know, citation violations of the law. Something we're looking at. 
All right. And so also, can we uh, talk a, a little bit about the conference that was happening that was in Bellingham? Uh, I think it was a couple weeks ago. How the way that I that I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that there was this group that uh, got together that wants to um, get get rid of all the treaties. Um, they're saying that they're not um, worth anything, and that um, they want every native person to be assimilated. Yeah, the conference was organized by Citizen Equal Rights Alliance. That's citizensalliance.org. Um, their mission, you know, it's, it, the, they, they held that conference up in um, Bellingham. It was um, pretty interesting, pretty bold of them to do that right there and then, especially with all the I don't know more going on. So the Citizens Equal Rights Alliance, is a, their mission statement is federal Indian policy is unacceptable, unaccountable, destructive, racist, and unconstitutional. It is therefore Sierra's mission to ensure the equal protection of law as guaranteed to all citizens by the Constitution of the United States of America. And yet on their home page, they say they do not tolerate racial prejudice of any kind. Uh, we don't knowingly associate with anyone who discriminates against people based on race. And it's just basically, you know, that they defend the constitutional rights of Indians and non-Indians. And, um, I don't know, I, I really didn't, they were charging $30 to go in there to attend the conference, and I didn't want to support their cause, but we had some friends inside there that went to the conference, and they definitely said it was a racist. It was pretty much very, very anti-Indian group. And, uh, yes, they were talking a lot about federal Indian policy, National Indian Gaming Act, the feed of trust issues. Uh, they talked about water rights uh, for tribes. Uh, they talked about how the Constitution and, uh, you know, supports, is, is not spo supposed to support tribal, tribal rights and sure protects them. Um, but, yeah, the group, you know, we, we had about 40, 40 supporters up there, all from different human rights groups in Bellingham, Whatcom County, Mount Vernon, the Seattle, come and sing and perform and, uh, and advocate um, in, in solidarity for our I don't know more event. All right. Okay, thanks. So, um, how can people um, find out more about what was just happening up there? Um, well, we have a, the Lummi Nation has a sovereignty treaty protection office, and um, you can Google that, go to our website to learn more about Cherry Point, and um, if you wanted to learn more about Citizens for Equal Rights, opportunity to have a website again at citizensalliance.org to learn more about um, what they're where they meet uh, and the uh, journals they put out and uh, we, we encourage every tribal tribal organization to learn more about these people because they're growing they're growing they're anti-indian they're anti-sovereignty they're anti-tribal government all right. Well, I, I appreciate you taking time to share with us this evening. And um, again, I uh, I will um, post uh, all what we're talking about tonight on uh, on Facebook and a few other places uh, to get people aware. Because these issues, uh, I the first time for myself that I've uh, heard Uncle Billy like uh, talk about um, where he had a little discouragement in it because people don't they keep their Washington's growing and more people are coming in and they don't have any idea about the treaties and the fish and we need to keep educating. So I, I appreciate the work that you're doing. Yeah, thank you so much. We appreciate the work that you're doing as well. All right. So we'll uh, hopefully talk again soon. Okay, Brian. All right. Take care. Take care. All right, and this is Make No Bones About It. We're going to play a, a quick song, and uh, Chief Arvo Looking Horse should be calling in, and uh, we'll have him address uh, our relatives. Uh, well, I wanted this first talk uh, when he sent out uh, the recent letter that he sent out uh, about um, 
the prayer that's happening in May. And uh, I started to think about all the things that are happening across Turtle Island and reading about uh, the elk that when they makes it harder and harder for people to live traditionally when the pollution we just talked about keeps on happening. And like they're hunting elk and the elk have, uh, you know, maggots inside inside them and the fish have, you know, three heads and these things are happening and the destruction of our earth and uh, it's important for us to be in that prayer and uh, uncle will talk more about it when he calls and share with us uh, but i just think it's important for us to really listen um, we're and we've been talking about this for a long time um, where we're at right now in the in the world but we can turn it around i really know that in my heart so um, we'll be back in a few minutes with uh, chief arvo looking horse 